Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite distros for Linux. This will be Debian. This is version 12, and the code name is Bookworm. Let's talk a little bit about it. So right now, it is not officially released. The planned release date for Debian 12 is June the 10th, 2023. However, there's always a but, right? Uh, that is dependent on the results of testing and user feedback from trying to install the release candidate uh, versions of Debian 12 and gathering all that together and then making a decision whether to release it or not. Debian Linux is almost 30 years old. It'll turn 30 in August of this year. It was established by Ian Murdoch in August of 1993. Uh, the first stable release was on June the 17th, 1996, and it was called Buzz. Debian re uh, release code names are derived from the characters of Toy Story. Uh, there are three branches of Debian. There's stable. That's the current release. It's intended to be stable. It's usually well tested. The testing release is where you can preview new things that are coming in a future version of Debian. It's also the testing branch of Debian as well. It's where packages are brought in from the unstable side and then tested to see if they'll work. The unstable uh, repositories of Debian is also known as SID. That's bleeding edge. It's a rolling release. The packages are blindly accepted. There are uh, a number of derivatives and flavors for uh, Debian. Debian used to track the number of derivatives, that is, Linux distros that uh, derive from the Debian baseline, but th the project was called the Debian Census. It's currently inactive. If you're interested in, in helping get it back up off the ground, they're looking for people to, to staff it, but the Debian Census project would go out and people would find uh, new distributions based on Debian, they would document them and put them in the database. The, it shut down, I think it was 2019. The last bit of information it released was in uh, 2020, early 2020. And at that time, it was disclosed there was 121 active Linux distributions that were based on Debian. There are also a number of flavors of Debian, which Debian calls pure blends. And those are a subset of Debian releases. Those are usually configured for specific things that users need or want. For example, there's Debian Junior, which is for children. There's Debian Scientific, which serves the scientific community or science uh, research. So, yeah, there's others besides that. But what does it take to run Debian 12? We don't know. They haven't officially released uh, any release notes yet and won't until they, they get the, the thing out the door. We do know a few things. Uh, first, uh, we know that the architectures that it will support are 32-bit i386, 64-bit AMD64. It also will support the 64-bit ARM or ARM64 architecture. There's also ARM, that is the Extended Application Binary Interface, or EABI, that generally manifests itself as ARM HF. There's also a 64-bit Little Indian uh, MIPS uh, release called MIPS 64EL. There's also a 64-bit Big Indian, which is based on the PowerPC or PPC 64EL. And also, there's support for IBM System Z, and that's the 390X. So there's architectures for those. It has a pretty wide base of, of things you can run it on. So uh, what about recommended requirements? I think quad-core, 32-bit or 64-bit uh, Intel or AMD-based architecture. That would be i386 or AMD64. 4 gig of memory or more. Depends on what applications you're trying to run. And uh, you'll have to make that determination yourself because I don't know what you're running. Uh, 10 gigabytes of disk space or more. And again, same, 1024 by 768. I think that's rapidly uh, coming to 1280, to be honest. So I've gone over the Linux kernel 6.1 changes in the past. 
Uh, but I'll go over them again here just briefly. If you want more detail, go see the Alpine video. So the reason for uh, 6.1, people might ask, well, why did they go to 6.2 or 6.3? Well, Debbie, is, first of all, uh, 6.2 is no longer supported. That's the first problem. It's not a long-term support release. 6.3, it came out too late. I mean, it, it just released a, a, a month ago. 6.1 is the uh, newest uh, long-term support release that's available at the moment. They made those decisions way back around the first of the year. So, and 6.1 was released in December of 2022. So, yeah, it it has a 6.1 also has a longer life of support. Its support will, will, will run until December 2026. Initial support for Rust programming is in 6.1. And uh, I've talked about that before. That has to do with Rust programming for the kernel. There's also a KM SAN, which is a kernel memory sanitizer, which is in 6.1. There's also multi-generation least recently used algorithms for better memory management. And there's also memory tiering improvements that go on with 6.1. They've also introduced the maple tree, which is a more efficient uh, tree data structure. And processes are allowed to Induce collapsing a memory into transparent huge pages. That just makes things easier when your system becomes high, really fragmented because of the number of processes going in and out. That There's a way to collect them into larger blocks. The larger the block, the, the, hopefully the, it, the, it will slow the rate of fragmentation down the line. At least that's the thought. Support for uh, KCFI is a forward edge control flow integrity scheme. Uh, if you're uh, if you're not worrying about edge, then don't worry about that. Uh, the Berkeley packet filter has come some features that uh, help with panics. They also support uh, PKCS number seven signatures. So yeah, some good stuff there. And then 6.1 adds butter FS performance improvements. So did 6.2, so did 6.3. So they're continuing to patch some of that. There's also support for signed modules in 6.1, which I think is a good thing uh, overall. So what about some of the changes to Debian itself? Well, uh, Debian 12, the, f the, f the first thing I would point out is that, uh, it, and, and this goes forward. So they will now add automatically non-free and non-free firmware in for all their future releases to the list of APT uh, repositories that they'll pull from. So you don't have to go back in and add the non-free and non-free firmware to pick those up. However, if you want to keep things pure, I don't know if you can back those out or not. I mean, I haven't tried it. Maybe I'll do that and in the next video I'll let you know what happens because pulling those out could cause problems with the build if they've built, you know, reliance on, on packages in the non-free and non-free firmware. Uh, Debian 12 also is able to detect Windows 11 while using a dual boot configuration. The, the screen reader support that is coming for Debian 12 is actually uh, from the uh, Cinnamon uh, desktop environment. So, and that's, a, that's, as far as I know, is a pretty good one. There's uh, automatic launching for speech synthesis that's available now. So if you need that, it, it's available. Support for multiple, uh, this should be init RD paths. And there's support for newer ARM and RISC-V devices as well. What is the package update? So GNOME 43 is the baseline. Why didn't they go with 44? Well, GNOME 44 came out just a couple, about a month and a half ago. So that was... That, that did not meet, the, they were already in their closing down phase for starting to freeze uh, any new packages. So yeah, it wouldn't be likely that they would take that on uh, as a burden to try to test this close to when they were trying to le release. KDE Plasma is 5.27. I believe I've heard, I don't know, but I believe I've heard that the 5.27 will be the last release before KDE Plasma 6. So I don't know if 5.27 will become a long-term support release. It may. 
Uh, maybe you know already uh, that it is or not. I don't. There's also LXDE11, LXQT 1.2, uh, or LXQ if you prefer that, MATE 1.26, and XFCE 4.18. As far as the core application updates, the same thing applies here to what I just said, that the window as to when they chose these versions was some time back. So they're not using LibreOffice 7.5 is the long and short of that. Also, the ESR is 102.9. And you're probably going to go, oh, that's really old. And you're right, it is. However, I, during the Peppermint uh, I, uh, review, I showed how you can use APT uh, preferences. We are and, really interested in is right here in preferences. This is called a, uh, APT pinning. And the way this works is in here are are your files for pinning. So you got 90. We'll look at one right here. So what this is doing is, uh, in this particular case, it is saying all packages uh, pin the release, but I think this would be pin it to stable and give that the highest priority. Uh, if it's a priority 10, that is, if it's not in this one, then look here for the packages. I'm going to set up, um, let's, let's do Firefox here, uh, ESR. And so I, what, what I'm going to do is set up the pinning. But one of the things I look for when I'm doing an install and I have pinning enabled for an app is if it installs lib6c, stop. Don't, 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 <laughs> that's just my, my advice. I mean, that's a rule of thumb. It's not an absolute, but generally if, if you're pulling lib6d from another repo other than the one that the kernel was built on, yeah, you're going to be a world of hurt potentially. So, all right. So what we want to do is we want to create a file that has uh, two entries in it, essentially. These are entries. So that first one is entry. This is an entry. So I, you can have this be a star if you want all the packages to be affected. So in other words, you want bullseye security to replace all the packages. It's probably not a good idea. But what you really want to do is, in this case, for just Firefox ESR, I want to pin the release to uh, the bullseye-security repository. I'm giving this a priority of 900. So if there is any other things in here, or in the preferences that are, are maybe overlaying this, that this would have maybe a higher priority than the others. Then this is the package that it normally would be in, which would be the bullseye stable. This has a lower priority, so if it's not in here, it will go here. You get, and then we'll do an APT update. And I should see a package now. And if I do an APT list, you can see that, yeah, it's got a version 91 for the Firefox ESR, and it's coming from stable security. So, But there is a way you can pin individual applications or even a group of apps or even all of them to a specific repository. GIMP 2 is 10.32. Open JDK 11.6 PHP 8.2. I need that one. Uh, <laughs> that allows me to run Pharonix on the uh, RISC 5, and that right there is preventing me from doing it. Uh, so, because it's frozen at 8.1, <laughs> it won't let me upgrade. Python 3.11 plus and Samba 4.17. As far as my and first impressions on it, it seems to me to be really fast. Uh, I, I've even noticed that I installed the, uh, the flat packs. I, I put those up and, and got those plugged into the, to the store. And even those seem really quick to me. Uh, this is a lot faster release. Now, I'm comparing Debian 11 on 12th generation Intel hardware. It is noticeably faster on, on 12th gen hardware. Now, I don't have any 13th gen to test with. Also, the flat packs, of course, are running quicker as well. Uh, there, are, there are no delays in launching an application. In fact, 
bringing up Firefox 103 ESR took longer with the APT package than it did with Flatpak. Before I go today, I'd like to thank the sponsors of this channel. And these are my Patreon and also channel members. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. I, I appreciate your support for the channel. And thank you very much. Uh, as for the rest of you, thank you for watching this video today. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.